All right, so mean and peak velocity, the uses you can um, for those two parameters. You got the force velocity profile, which we've talked about in the past, and we're really going to talk about it in the future in depth. Hypertrophy specific, uh, specificity with velocity loss, estimating 1RMs without maxing out, which is a, a big a big help to our team. Daily readiness, intent for maximizing compensatory acceleration, super important for rate of force development, motor unit recruitment, uh, peak velocity for the Olympic list. And we'll talk about each. All right, the force velocity profile, you know, uh, it's usually we do that at the beginning of a macro cycle or at the beginning of the year to determine the qualities, the strength of each individual. Now, I get it. A lot of you are saying I uh, coach a thousand people, you know, and I can't individualize things. But you could, you know, measure everybody on your team at the beginning of the season and divide them between fast and weak, powerful, strong and slow, and individualize it in that way at least. And that would be, that would put you way ahead of most people. But anyway, that's just a, we'll talk more about that in the coming future. See, I recommend using either back squat or front squat, trap bar, deadlift, bench press, or uh, standing strict press. I don't use deadlift that much because it, you know, you got the friction as it drags up your leg. And, you know, it's just a weird one that people have. They're, they're normally going to decelerate at the top. And so, like, you know, I want something where they can explode throughout the, the movement, even if that means coming off the ground. Because we're looking for maximal effort. So... And then this is the way I recommend doing it, you know, start at 20%, do it for three reps, 30%, 40%, 2-3 to three reps, 50%, 2-3 to three reps. Then I go in fives, 55, 60, 65, all the way up to 100%. Uh, this is the chart over here that we've come up with, with, um, you know, higher level athletes. And it, I, f I feel like that'll probably match most of you. Powerlifters, of course, you know, we have, you know, one guy on our team, uh, Tank, that can get below the 0.3 on squats he can go like you know a great power lifter can go 0 0.18 0 0.16 or even lower uh, ryan has the ability he can but i don't i never like going below 0 0.3 0 0.3 is like pushing it and for most of you you're probably going to uh, max out before that especially if you're a weightlifter or a high velocity athlete like volleyball player etc these are the velocity zones that uh, we've talked about so many times you know, Brian Mann really did a lot in developing this. Um, there are people before him, of course, but these are the, the ones that most people are going to reference the majority of the time. Um, mean and peak velocity continued. So velocity loss, it's just when I say velocity loss, we've talked about it before, but it's you look at velocity loss from the first rep to the final rep and how much did it slow down that'll pretty much tell you the amount and the type of hypertrophy so if you get down to 50 percent maybe 60 percent velocity loss like you're at in you're almost ready to fail so that's where you're going to get max hypertrophy however you're also going to get a lot of slower twitch fibers so uh, we normally stay, you know, 20% or less for that, just to maximize type 2 hypertrophy. And we're after more uh, power and high-velocity adaptation. So, but if you're just trying to get jacked, you know, the more the better. So, uh, and these are some parameters you can look at uh, based on your own goals. Estimating 1RMs, we've talked about that in the past, but it's great for in-season testing for athletes. We use it during ta you know tapers or close to primary meets, um, and we rarely ever go to a true 1RM. Like I just posted a video of, um, well, I'm about to post. I haven't posted it as of recording this, but a video of Ryan Grimsland's squat progressions from when he was young all the way to now. And you'll see that when he was young, we pushed it pretty hard, absolute strength, because, you know, that... In those first couple of years, is super important to all the qualities of strength. However, specificity becomes king, you know, the longer they've been trained. So um, I'd rather guesstimate improvement than risk injury. When I guesstimate, I mean an objective view of velocity at, like, say, 0.4 meters per second or something like that. So daily readiness is another important one because um, usually we look at 80 to 85% of someone's 1RM, and I look at 
changes in the velocity at that intensity. So like if at 80%, they're normally, you know, pushing 0.48 meters per second, which is very common for a lot of um, our athletes. And then today they're at 0.42. Well, you need to look closer at, is this athlete ready to perform the workout that you've intended? So I prefer to use squats, pulls, and presses versus the Olympic movements because funny, but like when the, when the weight is like 80%, Great weightlifters can like pull it at not maximal, at sub maximal velocities and still make it because they're so efficient. So, you know, doing like a clean pull, a snatch pull would be better than just doing a snatch. So, 5% or less decrease in velocity, we just continue on as part of adaptation. 6 to 10%, we might decrease things 10 to 20% in volume and intensity. If it's 10 plus, we're going to do a little, catch a little pump and take it to the house. Intent, um, Compensatory acceleration, that, that is something that, you know, I'm not the first person to talk about that, but uh, Fred Hatfield, yeah, he's the one who coined, Dr. Fred Hatfield, excuse me, coined that. That just simply is a fancy term for accelerating throughout the entire range of motion. Maximum motor unit recruitment, that's important because, like, what uh, motor unit is recruitment is, it is like, that adaptation comes from maximal effort, so as high velocity as possible, and at slower ranges of motion. So when you're really pushing it, it starts to slow down. You're getting maximum motor unit recruitment. So ensures max hypertrophy and leads to increased strength. Improves the rate of motor unit recruitment. That's very important for weightlifting. It's a great teaching tool too. Like you're teaching them. When I say fast, they don't even know what I mean. But this is a great way of teaching them. Uh, the peak velocity. We use that for Olympic lifts, you know, peak velocity at second pull finish is really all that matters. So that's peak velocity is what we're looking at because that's what is going to be required to make the lift. And it depends on a person's height because the longer they can pull it because they're taller, the more velocity they'll create and the more velocity they have to create. Because remember, they're taller, so the bar needs to get to a higher point. So, And then um, more research that was needed on the Olympic lifts and peak velocity, in my opinion, but... Uh, so all of you nerdy nerds, there's what I would love to see you do your research on. And these are some suggested heights straight from Brian Mann. Let me just be clear. And this is this is out of our book, um, Bar Speed, by is Spencer Arnold and I both wrote it. But these numbers come from Brian. Uh, mean and peak power, monitor athletes' ability to produce power. You know, 100, if you do 180 kilogram back squat in January, 700 watts, then 750 watts in April, you've increased in power. So because you're moving the same weight, but you're moving that weight faster and and power is force times velocity. So monitor some fast movements like trap bar jumps, hang clings, power snatch. I recommend monitoring some slow movements like back squat, trap bar, front squat. And then the relationship, that's the key. If the back squat gets stronger, yet the trap bar jump uh, creates less power or height remains unchanged, there's a problem. Your strength training isn't leading to increased power. Yeah, encourage encourages friendly competition amongst different size athletes. So if you got, you know, if you got like a heavyweight and you've got like a 73 kilo lifter, the heavyweight in theory should lift more weights all the time. But at least now you have something to compete against. And if you got you have the cloud, just like um, with gym wear, you guys can look at the um, power to weight ratio. So let's look at in relation to body weight, even cooler. Distance. Uh, I like distance because it's going to tell you if your athletes are cheating. So we're going to monitor technique, um, example, squat depth. We're going to also look at work. So you got to think about that. If you have a tall athlete, consider really looking at distance because if work equals force times displacement, that tall person is going to get more work all the time so you might want to like give them a little bit less volume to equal the same amount of work produce power with lighter loads you know um, use absolutes example 15 kilograms or 40 kilograms monitor for increases in height monitor performance like you know if you get a counter movement jump or a static jump or you know same depth so consider you know consider using box here's what I mean by that you can monitor like a squat jump but you want to probably set a box at a certain height. So because like if they go, say, you know, 10 inches low this week, a few weeks later they go 15 inches, 
that 15 inches is probably going to yield, you know, an increase in height and velocity. So, but nothing really happened. That person just used range of motion more wisely. But so make sure you get some constants. So solid correlations between squat jump heights, vertical leaps, and improved sprint, uh, sprint performance. So looking at squat jumps with distance really gives you some good things to monitor. And then my favorite bar path, like you guys can actually see uh, changes in velocity and changes in bar path. So because like if the bar just forward off the floor, then it's not going to be as fast. So sometimes people say, oh, it just feels heavy today. It's because you're doing it wrong. And this allows you to quantify that. So bar path demonstrates overall improvement in movement, like improved kinesthetic awareness, you know where you're at in space, expression of athletic attributes during the exercise. So can they move and listen to you? Demonstrates a maximizing of potential athletic improvements from the exercise, velocity, force, power, work. All those things only happen if you do it correctly. The bar path quantifies that. To achieve uh, and proper vectors, do you want vertical or horizontal force production? So to achieve the benefits for strength training that researchers and coaches reference, the athlete must demonstrate optimal technique. All right, guys, in conclusion, my favorite attributes are the to wear flex, and there are several, but it's easy to use and understand. I love the community feature, a uh, great way to inspire each other. The favorite section, a.k.a. the prescription section, is where programs can be written and shared. Um, video with velocity, bar path, or one of the other parameters, I love that. Uh, automatic data storage and easily accessed. You can share workouts, and I will finish with a quick tour. So create workouts. This over here is a, I did a screen recording of the Flex app on my phone and I'll show you how easy it is to create a workout. Um, of course, I named it Jacked, of course. So anyway, there you can uh, either do it like normal, typical exercise, back exercise, or you can do a superset or you can do circuits. It's super easy, makes it automatic. Um, you can make changes to one set of an exercise or all sets, um, which makes doing you know, writing the workout faster uh, you can prescribe velocity which is what I love you know you can do both you can prescribe the mass you can prescribe the which is the exact weight you can do the um, percentages of a workout um, you can mat rest intervals you can save it for future uses or comparisons to see if you do better in the workout or not and then you can um, share with your athletes and friends share it to the community which we will go over more in a second the community aspect um, Samantha Chen that's the gym aware sports scientist that's amazing uh, we're lucky to have her on board but anyway you can share your workouts with all these people you can inspire each other learn from each other encourage each other you can share workouts with each other compete against each other and see who did the most volume or who had the highest velocity whatever you can simply click on a star use their you can use their program they can use yours if you make it uh, available to them so great feature definitely separates them from the competition and the video section everybody who knows me knows that I love the video section so <laughs> I use it all the time but you know you can look at bar path this is um, Brian Risenauer Working on his bar pass, you can compare velocity to the bar path. You can look at velocity loss, 1RM with velocity cutoff, um, and I'll show you all these in a minute. Uh, we can look at power production. You can do, I can teach you how to taper and, and monitor that taper. Distance, you can look at distance and why is distance important. We've already talked about it, and it's just cool. So, because like, you know, when velocity changes, and the bar path changes now they can put two and two together velocity loss now we talked about earlier but like uh, you want to stay under 22 percent as you can see he does just that sometimes on his final rep he like anticipates racking the bar so it might get a little bit slower but normally not Let's see where where he's at he got a 12 percent and now he's at well i didn't get the last one but uh, here's brian Remember, if you're for weightlifters, you want to stay around 20% at max per day. So, like, 
you know, most of the sets are less than 20% down. But every once in a while, we'll take them to that or below, and that'll be fine. It's just where do you spend the majority of your time, and how fast are you doing, you know, your movements on the regular versus like once in a while, you know, taking things to close to failure just to get a little hypertrophy is, is okay. Now we can look at power and power loss. So now you can decide, well, when his power starts to drop, maybe we should rack it if your goal is maximum power. But Brian does a really good job of staying close, except on his last one or two. So here's a 1RM with a 0.3 meters per second cutoff, which for Tank um, is easy. That, you know, Number one, he's shorter, so he's not going to get as high velocity as most people because impulse, force times distance. But I mean, uh, force times time. Anyway, it also makes bands, band use easy because instead of worrying about how much tension the bands are using, I just go until they meet the velocity intent. Monitoring taper, he hit 200 kilograms, almost 0.4. Here's in Greece, I knew we were about to destroy people. At 0.44, that was a PR at 0.44, which is normally for most people about 82.5%. So crazy stuff. Here is um, now this in this feature we're just looking at uh, height and then changes in height based on where they're at time wise in the program, which is basically what we do in Dimaware. We measure distance and time and how that um, affects everything. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you next week.